Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I'm gonna make this really simple low poly treasure chest that can be used for example as a game icon or a token on a board game or what have you. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave that like, it really helps my channel to grow. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and the bell button additionally if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump into the empty Blender file and I will just select everything, press X and delete. And I'll start with the plane because I want to have origin point at the bottom there. So let's press Shift A and let's add a plane. Now we can zoom in a little bit, tap in for edit mode and now press S, then Y to scale this just like that. So this will be the proportions of our chest and now we can just press E and extrude its height. Something like that should work. Now let's switch to the edge select, select these edges by holding shift and let's press Ctrl B to bevel those. And now we'll increase the number of cuts with our mouse wheel. We don't really need too many cuts, maybe just three like that. It should be enough. And let's do a bevel that it almost touches here in the middle. And now let's press one to switch back to the vertex select. Select these two vertices in the front and let's press M and merge at center. They will join those vertices and now let's do that in the back as well and now what we can do is by holding shift we can select these two vertices in the front and press j to join them and do the same on the other side this way we are able to create the loop cuts down there so let's press ctrl r and create a loop cut right here okay and now we can go for face select by pressing three and by holding Alt, we can click here to select this loop around our chest and now additionally hold Shift and select this bottom face. And let's just press P and enter to separate this into another object. So we now have two objects. If I tab out, you can see we have the bottom of the chest and the top part. And now with the top part of the chest, I want to move the origin point. So let's tab in. Let's go to the edge select or press 2. Select this edge right there and hold Shift S and switch cursor to select it and now tab out right click and set origin to 3d cursor that moved our origin point here so now if we press rx we are able to rotate this object like this and now for the shape of the chest let's select the bottom part tab in and i want to select this bottom face so press 3 for face select and just press s to scale it down just a notch like this so we give it some more interesting shape let's press a to select all press alt e and extrude faces along normals and let's just extrude inside you can additionally press s for even scaling and create an extrusion like that now you can see this went a little bit up so if you want to compensate for that you can press 2 for edge select alt click this loop around and now just switch the snap to vertex press g then z and by holding control we can snap this to a corner and now we have flat surface on the top there so the next thing i want to do is to go back to the face select by pressing 3 alt click this loop again and press i to inset and i again for individual inset faces so we are able to do something like this and now press alt e extrude faces along normals and just extrude this inside so we have some interesting structure there now we can tab out and give some attention to the top part here so tab in and first of all let's extrude it in a similar way so alt e extrude faces along normals let's extrude it inside just like that press s for even scaling and release that should be just fine and now we can create a little rim out here so alt click this loop right there alt e extrude faces along normals and extrude it outside just like that. Now there is some geometry that we really don't need. So if we rotate this way, we can press two for it. Select alt click this loop right there and press control X to dissolve it. We really don't need it there and it can be an obstacle later. And now let's rotate this once again. And I want to go for face select by pressing three and let's select these top faces on our chest and let's do an inset here. So press I and I again, we don't need individual inset 
and let's do something like this here and alt e extrude faces along normals and let's extrude this inside just like that okay so now we have some interesting chest shape and let's give it some more detail by creating a locking mechanism here so let's select this face right there press shift d to duplicate it right click to release it in place and now press p and enter to separate it again into a new object now we can tab out and select this new object and now you can see this object has the same origin as the top part of the chest and it has the same rotation same orientation so we can take advantage of that press a to select all s then x to scale it on the x axis just like that and now we can go to the edge select select this top edge press g then z and if you press z again you will switch to the local rotation local axis and now drag it like this and we'll do the same at the bottom here so press g then z twice and move it down and now we can go for vertex select by pressing one and control b then v for vertex bevel and reduce the number of segments to one and create the bevel like this okay now we can select all and just extrude it just like that and finally let's press a to select all press g and y twice so we can move it back just like this so we have some locking mechanism and the chest body and what i want to do next is to give this um, a little bit more details and what i like to do is to use bevel tool for that um, but first i want to modify this further so let's select the top part of the chest press tap and now go for face select select this face right here and we can do the same on the other side by holding shift and let's press i to inset so we have some more geometry to work with here at the top and now go for edge select by pressing 2 and select these two edges and let's press ctrl b to bevel and you can see we can create this nice wooden like cutouts and um, they will really help us detail the chest further select this far vertex and press g twice to slide it and basically this is the technique i will use to create details so for example i can select this vertex right here press ctrl b then v to bevel it and then i can press ctrl t to triangulate so we have a nice cutout like this um, we can do the same for the bottom part first i want to create some cuts here so press ctrl r and create two loop cuts here and increase the number with mouse wheel and we can go for edge select select this edge near the top and just use the bevel modifier same as before and we can do one cut along the x-axis to create some cutouts here as well and triangulate them now if you need to bevel these vertices you would need to get rid of these edges so let's go to the edge select select these three edges and press ctrl x to dissolve them if you're worried about the angles don't worry we are using flat shading this won't matter in any way and if you would like to use this in game engine it would get triangulated anyway so don't worry about the angles and now let's go for vertex select select this corner and press ctrl b then v to bevel it and we can do the same on the other side as well and now you can see you have some nice details, wooden wear, cutouts, um, some damage and stuff like that. And of course, there is a lot more that can be done here. So for example, we can create new cuts here as well. And now, for example, we can bevel this and slide this corner back, create this nice wear effect or damage. And we can, of course, create some corner here and slide its vertices around so just go around your object do quick adjustments like this and i will go for this locking mechanism and just bevel the front so we have some more detail there so that's about the chest and now let's press shift a and i will create a circle here and reduce to 12 segments now let's press g then y to move it towards the front tab in and make it smaller this will be our coin or something like that and press F to fill, extrude, press I to inset and extrude once again inside. And now we can alt click the other loop, press Ctrl B and bevel it. So this will be our very simple coin. And now of course you can create some damage there as well, like partially beveling some edges or even creating corners like that. Okay, so that's our coin and now I'll just move this inside the chest 
and randomly distribute it around. Remember, it won't be too much visible, so don't bother like filling the chest full of coins so it aligns perfectly. And the important thing is that it looks good from the outside. Um, if you want to open this more, you can always select the locking mechanism, shift click the top part of the chest, press Ctrl P and parent the object. So that way, if you move this or rotate, it will move with the lock as well. And now you can use Alt D to create a link duplicate of the coin and R twice for some trackball style rotation. And basically just go wild here, distribute your coins and create an illusion of the treasure inside. Okay, should work and now press shift A, let's add a plane and let's scale this up. Now I will add camera and I want to add isometric camera so I'll use my isocam add-on here. If you don't have it, um, you will find the link in the description along with the guide how to install it. And now I will create the game isocam and adjust the resolution to something like 1600 to 1200 and reduce the orthographic scale to something like this. And of course, we can just freely move the camera to center it around our design. Okay, I really like this. So now let's go to the render settings. And now I'll enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections so we have a better previews. Let's go to the material preview. But I will use cycles for rendering. So let's switch to that. I will use GPU for my rendering and enable viewport and render denoising. Reduce the samples to something like 512 for now. And in performance tab, I'll reduce the tile size as well. I found that it's a little bit faster on my GPU. Now let's go ahead and add some colors. So let's select the background and we'll add a new material. And I will use some kind of blue color here for now. And now let's select the chest. And let's go for the brown tones, something like this. And we can increase the roughness there. And we'll use the same material here. Maybe this is too bright. Let's desaturate a little bit. Something like this. And let's go even darker maybe. Okay, and now for the coins, we can use some golden tint. Increase the metallic value. And increase the roughness a tiny bit. I don't want that much shine in a flat shaded look. And let's use the same material for our lock. And maybe this looks a little bit too small now with, in comparison with those coins. So maybe make it larger, tiny bit. Okay, just like this. And that's for the coloring. So the rest will be mostly about lighting. And now we can switch to the scene lights and scene world. So we actually see what we are doing here. And let's press Shift A and let's add some light. Let's add area light, press G then Z and move it up. And I want to use the top light as first. And now let's increase to something like 500. That will give us this nice top down light. And now I want to fill these sides because it's too much in the dark. So let's press shift D. And now I will hold period, switch to 3D cursor. Now hold R, X and bring this down just like this maybe make it a little bit larger so the shadows are softer and press r then z and just bring it to the side like this so it creates this kind of shadow there like that let's leave it at 500 and we can play with the distance and now let's press shift d r z and bring one to the other side as well maybe on even steeper angle just like that. And now select the original area light. Let's press shift D and now we'll be more precise. Let's press R then X and minus 45 degrees and R and Z 45. So they'll bring it directly opposite our camera and this will create some nice reflection for us. So let's increase to 1500 and let's give it this kind of nice greenish Caribbean tint and you will see how this reflects. 
on the chest and how it looks a little bit better right away and now we can go to the world settings and increase the intensity of the world light and, and give this some violet color that will nicely blend our colors together and now for these lights we can bring in some more color as well we can mix in some orange some warmer tones you can see them reflect on that golden coin and now if we preview um, this already looks a little bit better but still it's a little bit contrasty a little bit artificial and i want to disperse the light a little bit more and what i like to do is to add some fog so let's press shift a add mesh and cube let's press s to scale it up and move it up a little bit so it kind of encapsulates our scene into this cube and now let's go to the material tab let's create a new material here and we'll just disconnect this principled shader in the surface area and expand the volume and add principled volume shader and now of course we'll need to reduce the density to something like 0 0.02 really subtle fog but now if you look closer there is a little bit of that veil that nicely blends these colors together and you can even adjust the color of the fog so you can give this a little bit more of the tint that you're going for and let me increase the roughness on the background here and now you can just go to the render settings color management and play with the contrast settings i like to go medium high or even high contrast when i use fog and then play with the exposure like this so you can see this is nicely blend together looks a little bit more painted a little bit more like a hand drawn um they're not so like sharp dark really black shadows and i think overall it helps this kind of design to pop and if you'd like to add a little bit more visual effect to this kind of scene you can add some point light here so let's press shift a and add a point light and you can move it up so it's kind of in the upper half of the chest and you can increase its value to something like 150 and make it really golden and that way you can kind of have this shiny effect inside your chest so that's it for this low poly game design treasure chest i really hope you enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget to leave that like and again if you're new to the channel and you want to see more please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day